uh, you get uh, now four total of four shares. Emerald, well, actually, it adds that up. Yes, you get a total of four. And then with Emerald, you're getting um, you're getting that amount of, amount of shares. And so it just it continues to add the amount of shares of the next business center that you're maximizing. Then on top of that, you continue to have incentive to build more business centers, right? So how much more incentive do I have today to build and maximize a new center compared to what I had when I was just a gold director? So this incents leaders to want to build more and stay committed. It's hard. It's hard as a leader, though, because when you've got strong residual leverage income, you kind of want to go play and do things on your bucket list that you wanted to do before. And so it's harder to like stay focused, to want to build more business centers. But this is the reason that we do that is because our incentive pool allows us to do that. We also have a 2% elite bonus program that the top earners plug into that's probably about 50 and above that work in quintiles and you're working against your own growth year over year from the week before. So pretty cool stuff. Make sure you go to our average earnings chart. This is important so that I don't get in trouble and get in trouble here, like casting out a vision that this is, you know, not going to require work or anything. Of course it will. You guys all know I'm a hard worker, right? I mean, there's no doubt about it. When you see that I engage, I'm kind of like sometimes all in or nothing in our business. When I engage, I'm on it. Like I don't set it down and I get super excited about it. And this is why I will focus in and start building those re-entries and those legs aggressively. You don't have to work it at the same speed that I am. Most people don't. Do you find what works for you in, a, in a, as your side hustle, as your part-time venture? And then but eventually this stuff's going to become more and more important and you're going to start to get good with Excel spreadsheets. You're going to start to be planning out. You're going to be mapping out what volume you need to have for the end of the week to get your checkup. And the compensation is a very important part of your future. This is an important part of your motivation. If you're not looking at your, your volumes literally every day as you start to build your group and that's important to you to see where they're at and what you can do to, to create bigger check, then you're missing the boat here. That the structure is here to help motivate you and reward you for the long term when you're doing that. Okay. Do we have any questions around the compensation? I mean, the rest of the, these slides, I'm not going to go through all of it in more examples. I think that that covers about most of it just in light of time. Do we have any questions in the Zoom? How do we place preferred customers and customers? Okay, good question. So you have a couple of different ways to do this. So... People that go to your, uh, they, they, they go to your um, USANA webpage and they hit click enroll and they make an order. Um, that is going to be connected to your default placement on your left or right side of a business center. Or um, if you want it to go down below someone specific down below your business, if it is an associate that you're enrolling, then you have the choice to place them down below another person. I've got a slide here somewhere that shows that. I'm right here. Well, hold on. Uh, still getting familiar with this, but basically if, if you're enrolling an associate down below another member, then you've got to know their associate number. And then you go in and you do a direct enrollment link that is back on your USANA hub. So then you like so figure out where you want that to go. So like if this down below Sue on your right side here is where you wanted that person to go to be able to help build your business, you can't put a preferred customer down below Sue, but you can put an associate down below Sue, right? So if you go in and go to back where we were talking about in the hub, right here. This is why this one slide was super important. And that was the right here, this direct enrollment link, right? So on your, in your business, my business, and you can't access this within the, the hub app. You actually need to make sure you take it to Safari or your browser on your smartphone if you're trying to find this. And then go in and find out Sue's ID number and then come down here to direct enrollment link and put in her ID number and then the left and right side of her business. And that's awesome. This ends up being you still being the sponsor of that person, but you can place them down below someone that's already on board. Keep in mind, uh, I have 760 personal enrollments throughout my entire USANA journey. So I have been enrolling people personally down below people in my organization using this strategy, direct enrollment link, where I'm building, where I want to go. 
I'm choosing it where they, where they should go. Or if I'm starting a new leg, I think right now my default placement goes to my 39 business center, right? And so I don't really have any new team I'm working with there. So if I just happen to be busy and not noticing I got an enrollment or something in my email, then at least it's starting a new leg that I've set up as my default enrollment placement. But if I got my eye on the ball and I'm working with somebody and I'm getting ready to enroll them, I've already strategized where I'm going to put them. And I'm going to go here and put the ID number and figure out where they got to go. And then I'm going to also contact Sue after and say, guess what? I just enrolled somebody down in your business, right? And get them fired up. Um, and I'm usually doing that in my weakest legs. So if you're in my stronger legs and you're on this Zoom, like Jared, dude, there's not a chance I'm going to enroll someone down below you. I'm sorry, dude. I know you're killing it, but you're on your own. You're already like duplicating. You're doing it. It makes no sense for me to enroll someone down below Jared because that leg does already a gazillion amounts of volume below me, right? So I'm going to only be placing people down below in an area that I'm personally focused and I'm working on. And this is the magic behind our compensation plan. If you're not doing this, then you're missing it. You're working harder than you need to be working. What you need to be working on is your, your weakest leg on always sponsoring people with your own personal activity in your weakest leg, then your checks will grow. You're going to hit that thousand dollars a week, even faster than you think. If you'll just focus on your own recruiting and your weak legs, and then you it's, it's, it's all about how big you want to build it from there. Once you've learned to get that thousand a week, you know what it's taken. You can go duplicate that and do it again. You know, it's not uncomfortable now. Now you're, you're through it. You've got, you figured it out. You're, you're comfortable with all this and you've got more credibility. You've got more resources. You've got more checks coming in. You've got more money that's disposable income, right? So you can go and hit that 2000 a week way faster than you hit 1000 a week. You can hit 3000 a week way faster than you hit the 2000 a week. It's, it's, it's how it works. It's, it's the power of duplication in this. Okay. Any other questions? All right, so do you have do you place um, new members one for one or new one on the week side and then put? Okay, good question. So I never enroll associates of my own below two legs of somebody. So I'm only going to enroll on one leg of them if they, if they happen to be blessed enough to be in a weak leg that I'm actually working. Which which realistically, if they're working their tail off and generating a whole bunch of volume, then. Uh, I probably wouldn't be placing down below them anyway, right? I'd be doing another leg. So it's kind of like, in a sense, the wrong thing sometimes. But but realistically, um, I'm not going to enroll in their week. Or I, I had this happen. Is Lisa on here? She's probably going to be, she's, let, me, let me see. Not that she's going to, she's probably going to look at the recording anyway later. But uh, Lisa Cannon is one of my gals that I had enrolled. She um, loves the products. We both have a mutual friend. But I talked to our mutual friend before Lisa and I was planning to have him on board before Lisa. Well, he, he dragged his feet a little bit longer, but he's still my contact. And I started building down Lisa's side because I'm building, I'm growing. I have David Freer down there. I have like Walter down there, all these people I'm growing. It's all in this, this massive power team. So then this mutual friend comes on board. I mean, and I choose, am I going to put this mutual fund down below Lisa on her other side? No. Because Lisa's not coming to the training. She's not putting any effort. I know she's not going to train that person. She's not going to put any effort with that with that group. I'm going to put Christopher and his team down below these other people that I'm working with that are showing work. It's still down below her, and it's still my contact, even though it's a shared contact. Now, if Lisa reached out to me with her own contact, which is, uh, for example, her brother is a chiropractor in Sydney and has shown some interest in the products, if I can get her brother on board... I'm not going to put her brother in her weak leg. That's not my contact. That's her contact. I'm going to put her brother on her weak leg and, and still work with him and be available for him. But I'm not going to commit to personally sponsoring down below that weak leg. I'm not going to, I'm not going to commit. I'm putting anybody down below him or anything like that. Um, I'm going to keep working on my strong leg over here. So hopefully that answers your question. If you do this and you end up, getting too overcommitted by sponsoring people. Okay. Cause sometimes you're going to think, Oh, if I just sponsor and put some people on their weak leg too, and make them a great check, they're just going to like, they're going to come on board and they're going to be so fired up. And what happens when they don't do that? And now you're personally committed to two legs in their business. If you don't think that I've had this happen, I've watched people in my business get to a thousand dollars a week by not doing anything. It's just because I put a person on their left and a person on their right that ended up becoming aces. 
And that was, it was great for that person, but I ended up doing all the work for everything. They never did anything. Luckily, they still stayed on their auto order. They'd be dumb not to. But I learned a valuable lesson and not to do that because they didn't have anything to do with that. I could have put that down below the other people or put that in a whole nother leg of my business. I would have maximized a whole nother reentry, which in my world right now would make a thousand bucks a week and more commission. Plus in leadership bonus would probably be another 1500 a week. That'd be 2,500 a week to me, which is the same as, an, as another million dollars being added on to what I feel like my nest egg is. All because I had the bright idea to put two of my personals down below somebody that I thought was going to come alive, didn't do anything. And I still had to do the work where I could have just done the same amount of work and put it below one of my other legs, right? So don't make the same mistake. I know it sounds cool and sexy to be able to say that, that you built two legs for somebody, but it's not in the down. And in the end, it's going to hurt your relationship with them. Honestly, it really will. They're going to feel weird about it. You're going to feel weird about it. It's not going to be a great win-win. Okay, let's move on. We got all these questions answered, I think. Let's move on to our next our next uh, segment. This is a awesome marathon Zoom. I am really surprised we still have everybody on here, but I kind of thought it was probably going to be a couple of hours, several hour segment. Those can chime in that want to stay chimed in. They don't have to. They can kind of come and go. Um, and so I'm really proud that we still have 200 uh, on here, but that's a record. Tell me in one other zoom that's gone on for two and a half hours. This is two and a half hours, right? Uh, that, uh, that has still 200 people listening. Whoa. Yes. I love it. Imagine when, uh, we've got even more fine tuned on content. Um, guys, let me just say just for the 200 that's still on here, you don't know what I'm actually planning. This is so cool. I actually have rigging set up on a power table, a new power desk that goes up and down with a brand new Mac Pro with all lighting rigs around that, all new microphones and everything for that that is dedicated just to my Zooms. The quality of my camera, you won't see this anymore. At come middle of the week this week, you're going to see an all new me doing these Zooms. I'll be standing up doing most of them while I'm still doing my PowerPoints. I have a wireless labs as well that I can walk around. I can do compensation plan training on a new massive eight by six whiteboard in one of the sections of my house. Um, I ha so I'll be able to teach you guys strategies um, with whiteboard stuff, like real stuff. I'll be able to bring up things so much easier. I'll be able to do like just inspirational training when I'm standing rather than actually sitting down and going through PowerPoints as well. I did this last uh, Friday. I did this Friday night with, um, uh, oh, she's Ben's group. And, uh, and it was awesome. So I did most of my training actually standing and it was fantastic. The delivery and everything was like way better. So this stuff's going to step up in a big way for me. You're going to see about three different sections in my lower area of my home that I'm going to doing zooms from and creating content for all of you. So it's going to be more professional. You guys are going to feel better about getting people listening, your team's listening, and I'm going to be, have it be more interactive as well. So you guys can give me positive in, impact or <laughs> you can give me positive feedback but also constructive criticism too, saying, ah, that didn't work so good. Let's do it this way to say, hey, here's an, here's an idea for this. Hey, here's an, a suggestion for that. Um, so, I mean, I'd love to be able to have that. Uh, right before getting on here tonight, Benj and I were still like, he was like helping me like figure out what we were going to do tonight. And he's like, what, you're reaching out to me? I'm like, yeah. And then like we pulled the trigger on doing this rather than actually another thing I was going to do, another setup. So it's all about just being interactive, getting input from each other. Okay, we are going to do a first ever um, approach workshop with everybody. And so I am going to allow here everybody to unmute their lines if they want to. And I would encourage everybody to still stay muted unless you're talking. And um, the more that you want to offer any input, you can. Uh, it's late at night, so this is, is not we're not going to be able to spend like a whole bunch of time going through this and, and keeping this all completely interactive and effective. But there's a few things here that I think we, we all can bring some value. And, um, and I, I, Michael's sitting on here, and he's one of the co-hosts. I'm going to probably have him share a little bit about uh, 
like his thoughts around prospecting and his style. Just to kind of give me a little bit of a break here as I get a couple things written down. And, um, and if you have, you know, if you're also are having success right now with activity in your business, like you, you've got enrollments on throughout the challenge and, you know, you're doing something that's kind of unique and you can like keep it down to like a minute or two minutes or three minutes, then I want to encourage you to share after Michael, right? Um, so we're going to get started with some of those and then I'm going to come back and give you some content and some things to write down. And then we're actually going to do some role playing. Michael. Well, thank you. I mean, I, you know, I'm, it's a nice invitation here. I just woke up. I'm kidding. Um, at any rate, <laughs> good evening, everyone. Michael Hollander here. I'm down in South Florida, and hopefully you can all hear me. And um, just a little bit about prospecting. It's a, it's a process. And, I mean, we're, we're going to be talking about inviting, but prospecting is a process. And if you look at it as such, you want to cover all the bases. And so what are some of the bases that one might cover? Well, um, is you approach or invite, it's a you know, similar word. Uh, successful invitation, successful approach yields what? A presentation. A successful presentation obviously is going to create follow-up. And then uh, and ultimately, with seven, on average, seven different exposures, there's going to be closure. As opposed to closing somebody or convincing them, it's you're going to help them or you're going to allow them to make their own decision through an education process of exposure. What is that? Well, it could be additional videos. It could be social proof from another um, work from home that you get them on. So just, just think about it as a process. And so you really want to know with everyone that you're going to share your sauna with, uh, that you do share your sauna with, where are they in that process? So have you, have you properly invited them? What kind of response did you get? So um, I don't, I'm not, what, what I do <laughs> is I, I'll call someone because uh, I use the phone. And um, so I work cold market, but, uh, but just in, in terms of working with people that I know or people that I meet or people that I bump into, really what I want to do mostly before I say anything is what it's called discovery. Because if you don't, if, if, especially if you know somebody, if you don't know what they need or want or desire, how can you help them, right? So we do this naturally. Every day you guys do this stuff, you're just not getting paid for it yet. You know, every day um, when you talk to somebody on the phone, after you say hello, what do you say? What's up? What's going on? So you do this stuff naturally. Why not do it with, uh, with, with, um, with an approach? So when I do it, when I invite a approach, I might call somebody up that I know, for example, and, and uh, simply say, listen, you know, I'm calling on something I'm pretty excited about. Um, I brought up before, it may, may not be anything you're interested in, but, you know, it would mean a lot to me if you would take a look at what I'm doing. But before you get into any of that, just let's, I mean, we're chatting a little bit. Um, how's the family? You know, how's, how's the job going? How are you managing the, the challenges of the pandemic or your kids? How are you homeschooling your kids? So we all need to learn to ask questions that will allow people to reveal. And before you say anything, before you say USANA and pills and you know shampoo goes on the head, pills in the mouth, before you do any of that, really what you want to do is know. Because then it makes it so easy, right? So after you know some, you're going to switch ultimately, you're going to say, look, I was calling on something like I mentioned, it just might be a solution to the concerns you expressed about John not working and you having to pick up the load and you having um, so additional, additional, you know, financial stress. It may or may not be. So if I send you something, would you watch it? And if I send it now, would you watch it? Great. So if I called you back five minutes from now, you would have watched it for sure. I would shake my head up and down, even though I'm on the phone. And I go, yeah, it's like, great. So what, what happens there? And you learn this in GoPro. It's, 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 um, you know, you know, we've been teaching, I've been teaching stuff for like over 30 years, but I love that it's in GoPro because it makes it easy for everybody, right? We all just pick up a book and we learn it. If you eat it, you digest it, you use it, you practice it. What happens is your job gets easier and you get best results. So, um, it is as, you know, Jared and, and Jeremy, they've created some great, great scripts and systems. I would encourage you all to, you know, get your GoPro, virtual GoPro ticket so that you can get your hands on that if you don't already have that. And uh, that's worth its weight. And that's worth $297. It's worth a lot more than that. 
But uh, simply stated, go pro, simple invite. Inviting is what's referred to as the gateway um, skill set. And if you learn the gateway skill set, it's really seeking, calling somebody, letting them know that you're in a hurry, letting them know that, um, that you have something you want to share with them, but, you know, let's catch up first. Discovery, finding out what's in their heart and what they need most. And then, so, you know, transitioning. So, you know, either t- attaching the watching of the five-minute video to, um, to, to, the, to the need that they have as a potential solution. And it sounds like this. Listen, you know, what you just mentioned, you said, it sounds very, you sound very sincere. Um, if I send you something um, that might be a solution, would you look at it? It's five minutes. In fact, we can listen to it while we're on the phone together. And you could do that with them. Or if I send it now, when could you watch it? Well, I can watch it right away. Grace, if I called you back 10 minutes from right away, you would have watched it for sure. And they go, yeah. And then guess what? They made the appointment. You didn't. How many of you, when it comes to follow-up, I think I talked about this last, last week. How many of you, when it comes to follow-up, you don't, you don't have the, your, 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 let's call them prospect. Um, you don't have to make the appointments. That's set in stone. You don't have that appointment down. And so you sit around and you, and you fester with worry. Well, I don't want to bother them. And what if I seem like a bother? I don't know. Should I call them? Should no, you're going to call somebody. If you have somebody in your appointment book, you're going to call them, right? You bet you are. So um, that's, you know, that's how I do it. But most important, if you don't know, if it's somebody that you know that you're close with, you don't know what they need or want, take the time to find out. And the good way to do this, just practice. When you're talking to somebody on the phone without going through any of this and if I would do stuff, just see what you do. Get sensitive to what you're already doing um, that you don't know that you're doing, which is all you really need to do. And that is you talk to people, you ask them what they need, what they want, and then you transition to, hey, look, I got something that might be for you, might not, I don't know, but if I send it, would you watch it? And then go through that and uh, study your GoPro and definitely Jared and, uh, and Jeremy's uh, scripts that you heard tonight. There. You're muted. Uh, awesome. Thank you for that. Um, all right. Who else would like to share anything that um, they're doing right now, seeing some success with? Like any success stories around the GoPro challenge? I wish that Krista was on here right now. She's not on. I was just searching for her. But she's got three people she's personally enrolling right now and more to come. So I thought, oh, it would be great for her to be able to share that. Um, do we have any others that want to talk about just the, what's happened like recently around the challenge and things that you're having success with the scripts or even the four component approach? And if not, it's okay. I got plenty of content here still, still to cover. I just want to give everybody a chance to be able to share anything that's on their mind that they're having success with right now. Okay. All right. So one, so we're seeing this, this huge variation between um, you'll, you'll say like the different styles of being able to, to prospect and to be able to recruit, right? Um, some of them you're going to have that is, I'm trying to get my thing to, some of them you're actually going to have that are, it's fast. It's like really quick. It's getting like only a two or three minute approach to it's texting. It's urgency. It's like, get on this, this zoom, like, or get on this call with my upline. And I want to be able to do this video presentation with you. And um, that's, that's a fast way of doing it. Like it, it, it works that way, but also it works to slow down on the whole other end of the spectrum and really, have, if you have a relationship with someone, you're really going to get to know them. You're going to, or you've already know them, but now you're like refining out what's going on in their life. I did this with Alex Conger recently. Um, you know, it was on the Friday night. I think I enrolled them on the Friday night. Uh, that was the second Friday for our recruiting challenge. And I just hadn't talked to him forever. And I saw that he had like reached out and he was like, talked to my three finger posts and stuff like that. And so he knows me like we have a, we have, you know, we have history together. It's been amazing, but I just haven't talked to him for so long. So I couldn't really like call him and say, Hey, I want you to get on this zoom in the next 10 minutes and like, you know, learn about USANA because he has already been watching what I do on what I've been doing with USANA anyway. But 
Um, but I, but I realistically was like, he, I was like, Hey, what's your number? I'm going to call and just catch up and see how life's, you know, how, how's life. So at that moment, there was no like set way. It wasn't like a four component approach. It wasn't like, Hey, I'm going to read the script. It was like, I just want to see how Alex is doing. And I was just like, talk positively about what's happening in the world of USANA and my life. And like, you know, think I compliment on things in his life. And I, and honestly, at that point in the conversation, I was like, gosh, you know, like, even if he doesn't seriously t- uh, take a look at you, Sana, by this call, like I was just glad that I made the call and to actually reconnect with him and to be able to just see how the heck, like that made his whole night. But but the fact that I had just reached out and said, hey, you know, I want to, what's your number? I'm going to call you. <laughs> like, you know, what are you doing right now? And I'm like, watching a movie. Well, you, 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 can you hang out with me for a minute? And like, we talk, we, let's, let's, let's catch up. He's like, yeah, no problem. So it was great. And, you know, of course, Eventually, I'm starting to run out of time, and I'm like, it's Friday night, crank night. I've got like other stuff going on. I'm like, I haven't even really got him to go through a work from home yet. I'm like, I'm like, I started to you know put together information in my head about the urgency of what's happening with GoPro, what's happening with the the whole industry. He's had some experience in the industry before I knew, and I'm like, okay, here's the enrollment details I need from you. I think you should get positioned, start using our products, choose one of our packs, and. You know, at the end of the day, like if it's not for you and you you don't end up loving our products and you don't love what we're doing right now and see for your own eyes what's what's occurring, you know, it's all refundable. You can you can always send it back. And yeah, I think you're going to love the products anyways, but I've got to run. I've got so much other stuff still going on tonight. Can I refollow up with you in the next couple of days? So I ended up not enrolling him that night, but I woke up that next morning with enrollment details from him. Yep. Here's the packs I want. Here's my payment information. Here's what I want. Here, here's I'm ready to do this. Right. So, you know, there's no set way. And then other people I enrolled was in a, in a way different fashion where I was able to get them on the work from home right away and then do a more, you know, legit follow up with them right away as well. So everyone is just a little bit different. I will say that the one thing that's common in all of my approaching and you're probably finding as well is there's enthusiasm. There's that they have to feel your, your urgency. They have to feel your conviction. And I was listening to Jesse Lee Ward's uh, uh, seminar or, or, or a live that she did earlier today with content. It is, she was saying the exact same thing. It's that conviction in your voice. So you've got to make sure you're stepping it up. And here's, here's something that I want to encourage everyone to do. Your assignment is to have somebody listening to you do an approach. So if we have anybody that's willing to like step up and do an approach right now and let us all listen into it, it would be awesome. And that's putting you on the spot. It's late at night for most people. I get it. But at some point, I want to have some of these interactive shops where we're actually listening to each other do some prospect calls. And I'll tell you that even even my new guys I'm working with right now, when they're doing results and I'm seeing activity, I don't really need to listen to their calls. But I know they're working and we're not really seeing the results. And I haven't really been on the phone with like as an expert with anybody. And I haven't seen any new enrollments come through for a minute or, you know, like new active, new, new uh, things with preferred customers or anything. I just kind of lightly say, Hey, do you mind if I listen in on your net on a couple of the calls in the next hour? Like I'll just, I'll keep my phone clear. So you can just call and let me know you're going to be calling someone and I'll just stay silent. I'm just going to listen in. And here you talk. And it, it takes like some confidence for someone to say, okay, like to have your upline, your sponsor, listen in, or even anybody else, especially even like on a Zoom right now to listen in. That's it. It's, it's kind of tough to do that, right? It's, it's a little scary. But don't you quickly get some great information from others to be able to not only push you to do some things, but you get feedback on how you can improve in those conversations. Every time I've listened to any of my associates make calls, I always make sure I'm complimenting them and initially right out of the gate when we come off that call and letting them know the things that I really loved about that. But part of me being on that call was to be able to give them some constructive criticism. So here's the only things I could come up with on the call. Why, why don't you try this? Why don't you try doing this a little bit different? And in this way you, you talk and you know, you know what? Any one of you would probably give the same feedback. If you listen into someone, it's just having a chance to listen and you can pick up really easily the things where they're like doing the wrong thing, right? Overselling themselves or like um, 
way off on a tangent on the Dr. Wynn's story or way off on, you know, their own, you know, their own children's story or something and like spent 10 minutes on something and like uh, weren't cognizant of their time. So the, the, the way that you, um, the, the way that you can critique somebody is by listening to them doing that prospecting. And I don't know if you've ever had any of your upline, you know, or any of your leaders listen into some of your prospecting. It works. My upline used to sit at the end of my desk when I was working, you know, full time at this and he would like not leave the room. I'm like, Oh man, He's going to be listening to these next calls. And then it was like dialing for dollars days. We had the regular phones, not cell phones. And like we saw cell phones too, but I mean, we're like, we don't set the phone down because we're just calling the next person on the list. And it was mostly warm market guys. Yes. I still did advertising and had some cold market stuff going on, but I didn't set the phone down because my sponsor's sitting right there to making sure I'm, I'm on the phone and talking to people. Also, he would come over and make sure that I'd stand up when I was on the phone. So he wouldn't let me sit down, which is also like once I started getting on the phone with somebody, I immediately stood up because then I was going to transfer that energy to that person. And a lot of what I'm saying goes through the phone as body language. Today, we live in, an, in a world where not everybody is um, going to be receptive to a phone call or you know a FaceTime call. I hope they are, and I hope most of your prospects are, but what I'm finding is there's still a certain percentage, 20% of them, that they're not, they're not going to answer their phone. They're not going to take a call from me. But if I start texting or DMing with them, all of a sudden they DM me back and they text me back. And I'm like, wow, what an interesting concept. You can literally walk people through videos. You're going to get, you can invite them on work from homes. You can like put urgency, but the moment I'm trying to get them on the phone, they like, they disappear. So, I mean, that that, that, that kind of happens too. And so you've got to find this transition where you're kind of like texting with certain people. And I'm, I always say, don't pre-qualify anyone. But if they're a younger generation, they kind of like look at the phone differently than like me and Michael Hollander does, or, or maybe me and Patty does, right? Like they, they just seem to like, it's a little more difficult for them to be on the phone. Um, with uh, my last partner, you know, she was uh, a lot younger than me, <laughs> right? She was uh, in her in her twenty in her in her later twenties, and I literally never heard her on the phone. But she was constantly on the phone, like DMing, you know, messaging, all that. She would talk to her mom on the phone. She would talk to a best friend every once in a while, and then talk to me on the phone. But everyone else in her whole world was just all messaging. And so it is a different generation. And sometimes you have to identify that if you have a trouble getting somebody on the phone, right? And if, the, if you've got that, then just keep, keep getting better at your texting skills, your emoji skills, like, you know, those types of things to be able to direct them. And you can still get enrollments. You can still get them committed. Eventually, they're going to need to listen into you. They're going to have call, calls with you. One of the gals like that uh, wouldn't get on the phone with me, but then after she enrolled, then it was, she saw how busy I was. And then she was, you know, looking for those times that she could spend time with me on the phone and have those conversations. Um, the other thing I'll mention too, uh, yep. Had some people have experience with that. Um, this GoPro multiplier training, uh, Michael Hollander's putting in the chat right here too. This is awesome for anybody to get legit, strong, training on what to do for prospecting and approaching and how to get themselves set up. This is basically what he trained with all those other big earners in our industry for the first two hours. It was like a two hour training. That was our first one. That is still available. I checked that link earlier today and it works. If you haven't gone through this or wanted to have a repeat of it, you should watch it because this is going to get you, this is going to get you on your game. This is going to, I mean, there's a lot that he has to do there. It's pretty aggressive, but it's definitely going to help you get set up in the right mindset. I also like when you have people come on board that are, that are serious about this, or maybe you're rekindling some with somebody in your organization to get serious about it. Why not have them go through that multiplier training as well? I mean, it's going to get them in the right mindset, right? It's pretty aggressive, but that could be something that you really direct them to do, you know? Um, and it, that everything in there is a little bit different style. Every leader that talked of, you know, in the seven figure world had a little bit different style. And it just goes to show we all have different styles and that's okay. 
Um, I'm going to talk about um, some of my key things that I like to use around a four component approach. You guys have heard me do this before. I'm going to do it live real quick. It shouldn't take more than three minutes. Um, Johan, I see you there, man. Are you connected to a mic? If I unmute you, can you say hi? Is it working? Hello, hi. Hey, man, hi. how are you? I'm great, actually. You <laughs> know, <been>, uh, listening. <laughs> Fantastic. I like the energy as always. Guys, <laughs> nice, guys. Nice. Uh, Johan uh, and I have built business in, in the Philippines before. That's where he's located. And he has got a background with multiple different types of businesses and strategies uh, with you know income streams. But I loved it when I was over there. We had a chance to go and do a, um, go hang out at different venues and event promotions. So we could go out. And, of course, I like to have fun. He's connected to that. And then, like, the next day, He'd be having me meet with some royalty and some people that were running, you know, a certain city and a certain uh, area there in the Philippines. We had, we had a great time. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, he's come back around and now being serious about building his USANA business, all because of this grow, GoPro energy and momentum and everything we're putting together. So this shows right here how this is coming together. Um, Johan's probably mm -hmm. remembered um, when I used to do the four component approach before, but I'm going to put him on the spot here and just have him do a little bit of role playing with me. He's just going to kind of answer the basic things so that I can walk through how the approach works. Um, so I'm going to reach out to Johan. I haven't talked to him for a long time. I'm not going to say that we had a USANA background. I'm just going to say, Hey, Johan, it's, it's been, I've been watching you on social media. I know you're super busy. Um, it looks like you're involved in um, some real estate stuff. You're involved in marketing as always. You know, your, your, your name came across my brain as I was, as I'm involved in this new project. Um, I, I, I want to take a couple of minutes to explain it and it may or may not be for you. I don't know, but, but can you give me three or four minutes so I can explain in more detail what it is? Do you have three or four minutes? Okay. I'm listening. Okay. Perfect. I'm listening. Okay. So, so I want to get to the point and explain that what I'm about to, to talk to you about is a billion dollar company. Um, we are a debt free company. We are a publicly traded company on the New York Stock Exchange. We have thousands of elite and Olympic level athletes that choose our company's product every single day. They've got it on their sleeves, they got it on their outfits. Um, we do sponsor a lot of them, we don't pay one of them for their endorsement. Also, Dr. Oz himself, you've heard of Dr. Oz before. Have you ever watched any of his stuff on TV and his, his Dr. Oz? Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I did. I did watch. Who yeah. hasn't heard of him, especially, yeah, during, be, yeah. especially during the pandemic? And he's just been such a, a great authority on, on super good information and accurate stuff throughout this process and really cares. Well, he also is connected to our company. He talks about our company all the time on his show, and you've probably heard him mention this on his show before. And uh, mm -hmm. it's pretty crazy. In fact, these athletes and a lot of our scientists have been interviewed by him on our show. And uh, the, the cool thing about this is that we are the world leader in human cell culture technology dealing with anti-aging and wellness and and we have a company that is a pharmaceutical grade manufacturer that delivers products in over 25 countries around the world. And uh, I got to tell you, I, I can't go a day without using these products, Johan. I, I have used them now for some time. I have, I mean, it helps with energy. It helps with thought process. It helps with sleep. Um, they're customized nutritional systems for your body. Um, I use all of our skin and personal care products. Um, we manufacture this all in house. I have, we have energy products. We have stress relief products. Um, we have a skin and personal care system that is second to none. We have patents on our products and our cell signaling technology. I know this kind of sounds crazy, but we have more than 100 scientists that work for our company. We're the largest leader in the world for the future of nutritional and, and anti-aging science and, and wellness science. And 
And the thing about it is, is that none of these products that we, that of our billion dollar company are sold in any stores or retail outlets. And thank heavens for that, I guess. I mean, thank heavens our business is strong through the changes in our economy that I know it's affected a lot of other people and, you know, major retail outlets are, are closed down because of what's happening. But our sales are up because we were already in a channel of people learning about this from a virtual environment and from their phones and from our our websites and from social media, people are flocking to our business model. The number one searched thing on Google, on Google right now is work from home. So we have this huge surge of momentum happening from not only people ordering more of our products to support their immune system throughout this craziness and, and love our products, but on top of that, also looking at this from a perspective of generating another substantial stream of income coming in their life. And I know you've, you're a multiple streams guy. You've got lots of things going on. I get it. But imagine if we can work together in this and then we can reconnect so that we have more conversations. Like we can, we're able to stay connected more. Yeah. And uh and right, actually, yeah. we can generate something pretty significant for another stream of income, but maybe it's not for you. I don't know, but I'd like to take it to the next step and invite you to listen to a work from home Zoom that's starting in about an hour from now. And in, I know I want to see if you're available to just listen in and give me your honest opinion. I mean, your opinion is important to me, man. I'd love to be able to have you give me some feedback on, on, on this overview and let me know what you think. Would you do that for me? Okay, I'll do that. Uh, I'm just at your back here. So uh, actually, um, what I'm doing, what I'm doing is um, uh, also trying to get myself into the momentum of what's happening, and then get myself to be uh, knowledgeable about the business, and, and of course, what's uh, the who so that myself to be get into that momentum as well. So yeah, I'll right. be available. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we All have. Right. A we have a huge community of, of so much energy that's helping people right now around, you know, this whole craziness around the world. So it's something that can definitely help you with that momentum. I think you're really going to like what I have to show you. I'm going to send you the, mm -hmm. uh, the link over right now, but I'm also going to reach back out to you about 10 minutes before it starts and remind you. And if something happens and like, you can't make it, then just do me the courtesy and like shoot me back and let me know. And we'll find the very next thing that we've got going on. We also have like a short video thing that I can send over to you and have you watch that, you know, if, if the Zoom okay. happened to work for you live. But but I'm going to be on the Zoom. I got a bunch of other people that are going to be on there. I can chat with you once you're on there. So I'll, I'll see you on there in about an hour, man. It was great catching up. Uh, okay. I'll see you then. Bye. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Good job. All right. So all right. Now, let's break it down. Let's break it down. So what, what, did, what did I do? Um, here's the things I didn't do. Guys, I did not say multi-level marketing. I did not say network marketing. I did not say anything that were, I didn't say vitamins. Vitamins is not a sexy word, guys. Uh, let's, let's kill those from the conversation. So if you're saying vitamins or supplements, Nobody like sees themselves being a future vitamin salesman, right? It's just not, that doesn't look sexy. It doesn't sound incredible. Um, how about being a pharmaceutical representative of the most advanced health and wellness and research company in the world? That's what you do. You are a, a exclusive, unique rep of a global giant that is changing the world. In fact, I think that USANA will be a household name in the future. That's how big this is, this is. But that sounds way more sexy than supplements, vitamins, multi-level marketing, network marketing. If you bring these things up, then you're more likely to get objections around those. What I'm going to try to do is focus in on two or three minutes to be able to let Johan hear my enthusiasm and then ask him for his opinion, his honest opinion on the next step which can be the work from home or it can be the five minute video either way, or it could be a one-on-one -on -one zoom with them. Whatever your presentation ends up being, that's fine. My guy that's uh, working right now, I don't think he's actually on the line, but Paneer over in Singapore, none of his people will pay attention or get on zooms right now. He has to go do every one of his presentations in person. I know it sounds old school, but that's just what works in his market right now. He has to go do those one-on-one -on -one presentations. So it's not as easy as us being able to still connect people in on Zoom. 
you know, where we're in lockdown. So there's different styles. So, so now let's break down. What did we do? So does anybody remember what the four components are? Um, you can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself if you want, but what is, what is the first of the four components? Does everybody remember? Put it in the chat if you remember. I'm going to put it in here. Component one, credibility. I did not mention USANA's word my name in credibility. I did not, or I didn't, I didn't say this is USANA. I didn't say, have you ever heard of USANA? I don't care if they've ever heard of USANA because I'm going to teach them a way better version of USANA than they've ever heard before. So credibility. Let's talk about Dr. Oz. Let's talk about um, our, our incredible cells. Let's talk about billion dollar company. Let's talk about Dr. Wentz if we want. Let's talk about, you know, things that are exciting. Let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, anything that, that, that is, uh, that sounds appealing to them. If they're in the, in the uh, fitness world, um, they're in athletic stuff. Maybe, you know, someone that actually has been in Spartan races. Wouldn't you start with that right out of the gate being a credibility piece before you even bring up the word USANA? Okay. So credibility, then the next component is USANA. So that's now you can talk about, yes, USANA is the name of the company. We're, we're a world-class manufacturer, high quality nutritional and anti-aging products. I use them. I can't go a day without them. People all around me are using them. And here's my story. Like if you have a specific story on using the USANA products and you can keep it short because some of you can get into stuff on your, on your story. And it's like, Oh my gosh. It's like, you know, you're talking about your story. It's 20 minutes in it's too, too much. So if you've got a story, then that's when this comes in on this USANA step. All right. What is the purpose of the four component approach anyway? It's designed to be able to have you approach with credibility, but get the appointment on the business side. So you need, you need a pivot point somewhere in your approach to get them to look at this from a business perspective. That's the exclusivity step. You can call it the business step, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put in here exclusivity. I just think to, I just like that word. It just reminds me that it's something exclusive is awesome. It's cool. Not everybody has it. Like you can't buy it from stores. You can't get it from retail outlets. It just, even if I don't use the word exclusivity in the approach, it reminds me that this is my, this is my, uh, uh, this is my, yeah, that's the next one. This is my, my, my time to be able to make the transition of my approach. Maybe I'm just going to say, and you know, the beauty of this, Johan is that, Guess what? The number one Google searched phrase is right now. What is it? What do you think it would be? And then you can have him respond if you want. And then I'm going to say it's work from home. What if I told you that we have the best work from home system available connected with our company and our products, and we're changing lives all over the world? This is so awesome. And I know it can change your life too. You can generate some significant leveraged residual income that could really build, be a million dollar business. It could be worth that. I can show you how this can work. So that's the exclusivity part. And if that's too big of money for this kind of a person, you know, I've got, I've got one of my new associates that is like 18 years old and works basically for minimum wage at, at a subway right now. Well, if I'm, I'm not probably going to be talking to her about how she can build a million dollar business as the approach. I'm probably going to talk about, do you know what? What if I can help you generate more money working with me a few hours a week than what you earn working 25 hours a week at Subway? And you can still work at Subway doing that and, and still work with me these couple of hours, but get to the point where you don't have to worry about doing that anymore. And you can just utilize your time to do other fun stuff and make a larger income than what you're making right now. And that's it. It doesn't need to be in that million dollar range, right? Okay. And then the last step is the appointment step. So that's where you're asking for the commitment. A lot of times you can get everybody fired up about your approach and about, all, you know, asking questions, discovering people's needs and offering them solutions. But then what? I mean, they don't really know what the next step is. You've got to direct into that step. You've got to ask for the appointment all right, hey, I really want your opinion on this. Like, Johan, it's important to me that you tell me what you think about this overview that we're doing. I want, it's important to me to find out what you think of this, this five-minute video uh, that I want to have you take a look at. Can you watch it right now? Do you have time right at this moment? Cool, let me send it to you here in DM. Why don't you watch it? I'm going to sit here and just kind of hang out for a minute, answer a couple of texts and DMs while you're listening to it, and then come back on the line, and then I'll, I'll tell you more. 
like guys, it doesn't have to be this complicated. Like if you have someone too, that's like, maybe they're not going to get on the work from home zoom or you're like eight hours away from the next work from home zoom. Why not just ask them right then and there if they say, "Will are you willing to take a closer look at this? Will you take some time to watch a five-minute video right now, Johan? Do you have five minutes? Five more minutes? Okay, perfect. Let me send this over to you and listen in. I'm going to actually stay on the line while you do that, and then we'll, we'll figure out our next step from there. So you've got to have that five-minute video link ready to go. We have, do we have our five-minute video link in here? Let me just throw that in the chat. Oh, yeah, it's there. Five-minute video. Yep. It's right above the Eric Worre multiplier training. <laughs> okay. So, exclusivity, USANA. I mean, credibility, USANA, exclusivity, um, and setting the appointment. It doesn't have to be in that order, but the one thing you can't forget is appointment, right? I mean, that's the whole reason you're doing the approach is to get the appointment. So I'm going to teach you something about, as well about approaching. And this is a really important part of your mindset. You have to visualize them saying yes to the appointment, the commitment that they're going to do something. If you are stuck in this mentality that you're worried that they're going to give you a whole bunch of objections and that they're not going to look at this and they're not going to, you're going to do horrible. You're going to do horrible. It's okay though. because You're going to do it again and you're going to get better and better and better. But 80%, Assume the sign up. Yep, I love that. Assume the sign up. Assume the commitment, right? How did I finally start getting better at my presentations? When I started to learn to visualize the positive outcome in my presentation, instead of me thinking that I was going to do horrible, then I got there and I went and did it horrible. Until I started to learn to change my mindset and to spend time visualizing, not take any calls. On my, when I'm, I used to be when I drive to presentations, and then my whole drive, I just visualized the positive outcome of me doing a fantastic presentation and then enrolling at the end. That's when it, that's what that was the game changer. So I want you guys to also visualize them making a commitment that during your approach process, this four component approach. All right. Approaches always don't go as smooth as what they just went with Johan. You could get a, a few objections. That's okay. Um, it doesn't always go as easy as what you think it is when it, when it's, when it's live. And you hear us start doing some things live and you hear Jared and Marissa do it live and you hear me start to do it live on some of our workshops, then you're going to see it doesn't always go the way that we say it's going to go. Like you, there's so many variations, right? But that's okay. If you have some structure and some things in your mind that you're trying to accomplish during the approach, you're more likely to have that happen. And um, next, let me show you something else. Um, we used to get a, a ton of tools out in USANA when we first got started. So if some of you that got started back in the day, um, you know, it wasn't just getting started and getting your package of products. Like we had to buy a ton of tools and we were getting those tools out to people like crazy. But what did I find back then? If you didn't put urgency on using the tool, then people aren't going to do it. So same thing with having people, if you're not going to have them watch the video while you're on the line, and you're just sending a link to them and following up later, if there's not some urgency around that, they're not going to watch it. They're not going to do it. If you don't have some urgency of why they need to, to pay attention to a work from home, they're not going to do it. There's other things get busy. And that doesn't mean that you give up on them. Like if I give out tools or I get a commitment from someone, I'm still going to be persistent. I'm not going to give up on them until they really do finally watch one. But if I would have had a little more urgency in my voice, a little more conviction, they probably would have got on that Zoom and watched that or watched that video sooner than later. Okay. So understand that as long as you're persistent, that if they haven't seen the work from home yet, or they haven't seen the five minute video yet, they haven't really followed through with the presentation step. Do not give up on them. They need to stay on your list that these are the people you've, you've done your approach with. Okay. These are the people that have committed. They're going to look at it, but they haven't actually looked at it yet. Those, you need to be relentless on those people. Now, I realize that some of you uh, also just don't want to have to deal with the ones that aren't, aren't seeing it as an opportunity right now. I get it. You can take it away from them, like Jared was talking about if you want. If you're hungry and you need people to enroll right now, no matter what, like I was hungry. Like the only income I had coming in when I joined USANA was my USANA income. That's it. So can you imagine 
Like, I'm not letting anybody off my list. I'm not giving up with one person until they actually see it with their own two eyes. In fact, I'm telling them in the approach. I'm saying, look, this is so important to me that you see this. I'm, I'm not going to give up on you until you finally make time to see uh, work from home or you finally make time to watch this video because it's that important to me that you see this. Now, whether or not you do it, that's, that's fine. Maybe, you, maybe this is not for you. Maybe it's for somebody else you know that could really be a game changer for them. And maybe that's why my energy is being so attracted to you right now because maybe it's not really for you, but it's somebody that you know. So it's important to me that you see this and you follow through. And I'm like, I'm so relentless when it comes to persistence. You wouldn't believe it. Like, I don't give up on people. Sometimes it takes it. I know it sounds embarrassing, but it might take six months or a year before I finally get somebody in tune to what I've been trying to drip on them and trying to get them committed to take a look at. And if I, if I, if I'm hot, like getting, trying to get a commitment from them aggressively in the first couple of weeks and I'm still not getting much, then I just put it on my callback. I put it in my calendar I, on my computer, I put it in my calendar to, tr to reach back to this person in 90 days. And then I put some notes on when I talked to that person before or my messaging, a little bit about my notes on messaging them. This is where the biggest problem in, when, in approaching happens. It's not that everybody thinks you just have to have like thousands of people to go after right now. No, you just need to be smarter with the ones you're going after and don't let them fall through the cracks. Right. So you need to stay persistent, but you're always rescheduling those follow ups. You're always rescheduling to remind you to contact that person, because if you don't do it or you don't have it on another piece of paper here somewhere, then they're going to fall through the cracks and you'll forget about them. And it'll be a year or two or three years that go by. I mean, at some point, I'm sure that. Uh, I'm not using contact mapping, but that would, you know, anyone that has like some of the things that they like to use that are technologies to do, that would be great. Sometimes like with me, I get, uh, I get, I have people on my list and they're important. And then I like forget cause I just get busy enrolling other people. Cause I could have had Alex Conger on board probably 10 years ago, but it wasn't until my three finger, uh, pr my th three finger post that I saw his comments in there and it jogged my mind about how I knew him. Right. I'm thinking, when have I actually had a conversation with him about USANA? Never. Oh my gosh. What am I doing? I need to pick up the phone and call him. All right. One other thing I'm going to leave with you. This doesn't sound like we're doing too much. We probably won't do the, too much role playing, even though I'm, I'm down for it. If we want to I'm trying to think who I can actually call right now. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is reverse psychology. So reverse psychology. Oh, oh, okay. John's saying the, the USANA has the customer connect. So, you know, it's a wonderful tool to help keep track of your conversations and approaches. Perfect. And you guys are probably more familiar with that since I just got back out on hitting it hard the last three months. I haven't really spent time on that stuff yet. So that's great. I'm still a little old school. Um, <clears throat> so the next thing I'm going to leave you with, and then we'll be done. I'm just going to open it up for some Q&A, and I can do some more role-playing if you want, is going to be reverse psychology. So if you've never been taught reverse psychology before in, in recruiting, it's like a little piece of magic dust. And reverse psychology is where instead of like, okay, let's say that I know someone that is in the clothing industry. And in fact, uh, you know, clothing industry is not doing so hot right now because of the pandemic with all the stores being closed and everything else. And uh, one of my guys that I'm working with in Singapore, Paneer, like he has a clothing business with his wife. And I know, I know obviously they're struggling. I think they finally shut it down. But when I first started talking to him on the phone and getting to know him, I could have said, Gosh, you know what, Premier? I hear it's just horrible in your clothing business. Um, you know, I, I know it's just the, not the way to go. Like, this is exactly why you need to put a focus on building a sauna. Like, you know, everyone I know is not doing well in the clothing industry. Immediately, Paneer would probably have come back just because of feeling on the defense and go, oh, well, you know, it's, it's actually really still important to us. And like, it's still doing okay. It's still being profitable because you immediately go on the defense. So the smarter way that I handled that conversation when I got to start to know Paneer initially was 
oh my gosh, that's fantastic. You know, I know people in the clothing industry and some people have still just done so well. Like I'm hoping it's still working really well for you. Like, that's fantastic. Tell me more about it. Tell me how you got into that. Um, fantastic. You know, so as I compliment and I want and have a genuine interest in their line of work and what they're doing and how amazing it is. And I offer compliments every single time they're going to come back and say, actually, it's not so good. <laughs> it's str- it's tough. I'm, it's hard to be able to get, you know, the employees to work right. It's hard to be able to get the cells done right now. It's really hard because of the pandemic. They're going to tell me all the reasons why their current job or their career sucks. And this happens with anything, automobile sales, real estate sales, anything, construction. You know, when when I had my huge rise from 2008 to 2009, the, there was a construction, hor- it was horrible. Like all the big construction workers, all the all the builders in, our, in all of our areas around here in the U.S. were out of work. They had lost everything. But I was enrolling people like crazy. And I found out that if I contacted one of my friends that were a builder and said, Oh man, I'm, I'm sure you're struggling. It's t- probably tough right now. That's why I'm calling you because I have another way for you to make it out of this hole. I mean, I'm sure you've had to give up and lost your credit. I'm sure you have assets that's been totally, you know, been so difficult to deal with. I'm sure you got so many projects that can't get finished like everybody else in the construction world. Let me show you the light on what we can do. What would have happened? It would have been an instant defense. No, Jeremy, actually, it's okay. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. This is what's going to, I can see this. I can see it's going to come through. I I don't really have an interest in what you're doing. No, of course not. What I'm going to do is say, Hey, I oh, so I'm, I know you do construction. I'm sure you're doing well at it. I know, and, and I know, I I I love watching your projects. Um, I I, I want to talk to you about another project I'm doing, but I definitely am interested in hearing more about your world, like and how you know how's life with that. It's got to be cool being around creating and being around you know that type of movement right now, and being around some of the you know some of the the, the team and, and staff that you have. Whatever, however, I know that person. I'm going to throw some compliments out there about his line of work. Nine times, actually 99 times out of 100, then I just zip my lips and they're going to come back and tell me how difficult it is. And as soon as they tell me how difficult their world is in their life, in shoe cells, automobile cells, construction work, working at the hospital, whatever it is, I've just given them all these compliments. They're going to come back and tell me how the things suck in their world. You hardly ever have someone come back and say, actually, I love working my job. I love everything about it. I'm so glad that you saw that. Yes, it's fantastic. I love it. I love it. They don't do that. For whatever reason, they come back and they tell you all the reasons that they don't like it. And now you know right then and there how you integrate USANA into being a solution in their life. Well, it's good to know. Let me show you. Uh, what I'm talking what I was actually calling about as well, in addition to seeing how you're doing, is because I have a business project that can actually help you in that scenario. It can help you get away from having to deal with the employees. It can get away and help you create a substantial stream of income that isn't tied to putting any vast amounts of money into uh, your own money into tied up into loans and, 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 and tied to things that can actually go the wrong direction. So um, I'm going to show you some solutions. I'm going to show you some solutions to create free time for yourself. Whatever their challenges were, I'm going to show how USANA is the solution for them, right? And then all of a sudden you've got it. It doesn't matter what you say as long as you just talk about some solutions for them. Now it's like, okay, now get them committed to the work from home. Now get them committed to the five-minute video. Or get them, maybe it's someone you're going to go meet with in person because they're close enough to you there locally and you're not on lockdown and they're comfortable with that. Okay, great. Go go do that. That's what's, what works for them, Okay. All right. Those are the things that I had prepared. Um, I want to open up for some Q&A. We still have 161 attendees on here. This is awesome. I'm so happy. Okay. Where can I find sample for, for sip and scrub? Uh, if you want to um, message me directly on that, then I, I have different links I can share to you on some stuff that Crystal's put together to explain how to be able to put those together. But basically what you do 
on the sip and scrub samples, you buy the, the serum, the samples that are the serum from USANA. Then you buy the scrub. The scrub's not in sample containers. So you buy these little, these little containers um, off Amazon, and then you just put product in the little containers. It's measured out. So that that's the samples, the trials you get. And then you can still add the, the headband. You can still add the washcloth. You can still add a little printed sheet all with inside a little nice baggie. And then you ship that out to them. Do we have any of that available on our USANA back office world? Does anybody know that wants to comment about the sip and scrub trial, you know, stuff? I'm still, I'm, I'm actually fairly new to the sip and scrub. So I'm excited to, that's why I was excited to get all my samples out this week and see how it goes this Tuesday. Yep. Only the serums available. Yeah. So, but that's how they work. Um, the sip and scrub just take a little bit of effort, you know, and now that I have, Now that I actually have uh, several of these put together, I'm so bad at multitasking. I, it's this guy thing. If there's a woman right now, she can still talk and read the chat at the exact same time. Women are so good at multitasking. Guys, I, I, I can't figure it out. I've never met guys that are actually as good. And maybe Jared's probably the best at multitasking and, and Eric Worry when he can do this. But I actually have to stop talking to read this. Hold on. Okay, so the question is, Chris is asking, um, you know, like when you have people watch the five minute video, like where do you go from there? Because we don't want to like Google searching stuff out there. No, uh, I'm so glad that you brought that up. So the rest of the five minute video plan is covered in the script with Jared. He has a very specific way to use an expert, but let me just tell you what I do just off the cuff. My plan is to get them literally committed and signing up within 30 minutes. The first five minutes is the five minute video. Then I ask here, make a note guys. This is, this is what I do right at the end of the five minute video. What did you like best about the video? What did you like best about what you just saw? And then zip up your lips. That's it. And they're going to tell you what they like best about the video. Okay. And you can you can sit you can share a little bit about what they've just said about the video. Usually, it's going to be something positive. You just ask them what do they like best about the video. So you can spend time around that, and say, and then basically um, explain. You know, I would love to be able to work with you on a USANA project to help accomplish goals that you have that uh, that I'm I'm willing to work towards. So uh, I'm willing to work with you. And so you're going to be, uh, it's going to be for yourself, but not by yourself. Like this is something that I want to do with you and help you grow this together as a team. I'm already working this anyways. This builds in depth. And the sooner that you make a decision and get positioned, then the sooner you can actually start earning commissions and also the potential of other things that I'm personally doing could also be part of benefiting you as well. So, my goal is for you to be able to start up with one of our product packages and to be able to start using the products. You know that you have to use these. Once you start using them, then you're going to see for yourself if this is if you're solid and you and you really want to go out and build a big business with this or not. You can't really make that decision until after you've tried and used our products. We have some enrollment packs that I'd love to be able to share with you. Here they are, and I shoot them over on text. And here are those packs if I didn't have those out before. So here are the, the links on them. And these are also just in our share center, guys. So these are the United States ones. So if you're in another market, then disregard these, of course. You can, you can come up with your own, of course. But what I'm doing is I'm having them watch those packs or see what they are and explain what they are, you know, one at a time real quickly to them. And then I say, right when I've explained the packs, which one of these look best for you? Which one of these would, would be the best fit for you? Okay. And then the next thing I say is I say, can you afford to take advantage of this and to get started? And if they say no, then you, you stop right there. You know they're not going to go any further because that's they can't they don't have the money for it right now. 
Um, so now you're going to, you're going to ask, okay, well, you know, when can we get you started? You know, and then you're going to listen. If they have some objections that are more in depth, like if they have, and now if they want to learn more about the compensation plan or they want to learn more about anything else in USANA, they're going to tell you what it is, right? You just have to listen. All right. So, but if they did say, yeah, I can afford to take advantage of it. Say, fantastic. Let's get you going. How would you like to get, how would you like to pay for it? Like I can take the enrollment details over the phone right now. Let's go. And as soon as they it say, you know, what payment method they're going to use, then it's great. Then you just, you basically say, okay, I'm going to make sure I get the accuracy down on your enrollment. Um, so make sure you let, let here, go ahead and text me over your address. Let me make sure that comes through. Okay. And I'm just going to stay on the phone with you while you're doing this. And then um, at that point, I'm, I'm asking them, like, I always wait, always, like, if you're in a market that you require the tax ID number, never ask for that up front. Never do that. That's the way you're going to lose people. So wait until you've actually gone all the way through, get in there, get the easy stuff first, right? Name, correct, address, correct, email, correct. You're realize you're getting them committed. Like the more they start giving you information, it can be right there on text while you're talking to them or you're writing it down. And then, at the, and then even get their payment information, right? And then ask for the social. So how I set up for ask for the social, because it's always a sensitive thing. Well, not always, but with some. So I'm just letting them know that when you have earned $600 in commissions, then you're going to get a 1099 from the government, and which is a great thing. Hopefully we can get you that 600 in commissions as soon as possible. But when that occurs, then that's this is how the government knows to send you a 1099. And it's, it's, a, a, it's a requirement of all direct selling companies in our entire industry here in the U.S. market. So I need to get your social number. Jared is just mentioning that he thinks that we should have this in a script so that you can kind of read through it, you know? Um, so that's, that's what uh, he's mentioning here in the chat is all. <laughs> so I have other ways to close too. We should, if someone reminds me of this, I'm going to do a, uh, I'll do a session just on badass closes. Like I have like four different ways that you can close people and they all work fantastic. Another way you can close people too is just at any given time at any point with anyone, like wherever you're in the process with them and you're just like, I wonder where the hell they're at. I don't know where they're at. And you're just like, you just like get the guts up and you're like, hey, you know what, Johan, I know we haven't like gone, there's so much resources, there's so much stuff to go through, but just let me take your temperature right now. Where are you on a scale of one not really interested at all in this and a 10, like you're ready to go. Let's get you a position. Let's, let's go for it. Get products in your hand right away. And then we can reevaluate you know, your commitment level later. But where are you on that scale of a one to 10 right now? And Johan says, well, the most common one that comes back is a seven. And when that comes back, you're just like, yes, awesome, man, that you're so close. Perfect. What do I need to do? to get you from a seven to a 10 and zip up your lips. And they're going to tell you exactly what you need to do or exactly what's on their mind to get, to get going and to make that decision. That's just another, another way to be able, like, if things don't go smooth in your normal clothes and you're just like wondering, and maybe it's the third or fourth follow-up and you're like, you can always use that scale of one to 10 clothes. It works all the time. And obviously if they're like a two or a three, then you kind of know where they're at. So you know, if they've already gone through a presentation or work from home and that's where they're at, then, then, you know, put them on a call back down the road. It's not that big of a priority. You did your best. Let me make it clear that I think the biggest part of persistence is not once they've seen the presentation. It's not once they've listened to the five minute video. Where your persistence comes in is getting the commitment for them to, to look at something. Because once they've looked at it, and if they're still like MIA after they've seen a work from home or if they've seen the five minute video, they've heard you walking through the packs. If they're MIA in you and you just can't seem to get a hold of them, keep them on your Friday night close action night. But other than that, they completely come out of your books for like any other scheduled follow ups. And you have a, a Friday night call to action night. And eventually you just have a list of people that, have, that are fence sitters. They're people you've, you've, you've got to the work from home. 
they've gone through a five minute video, whatever it might be, they're your fence sitters. On every Friday night or Friday afternoon, you start freaking calling every single one of them with text messages or whatever every single week, every single one. And then hopefully you've got somebody coming on board and ready to enroll and you use leverage for someone else you have coming on board to say, hey, I just wanted to reach out to you. See if you are serious about you, Sana. I've got i got Elizabeth coming on board right now. She's over in Vegas. She's um, she's an entrepreneur. She's going to do fantastic at this. She already was on our Sip and Scrub event. I think she's pretty committed. You know what? This could be really important for timing. Are you ready to pull the trigger and to be able to get positioned? Because that's your Friday night call list, right? And probably most of them that you go through the numbers on, you know, they still haven't been able to get a hold of them that night or whatever. But what if you get two people as you've text 10 on your Friday night call list that say, yep, I'm ready to go. Here's my credit card. Let's go. Put her to below me. So the persistence, I think, is more about not giving up until they see the presentation. And then once they've seen it, like, you know, you got to like take their temperature, right? You don't want to be like a nuisance if they've seen it. You know, you can't talk them into making the decision. You, you need to, in fact, if anything, you'll say too much and talk them out of it. You got to learn how to close why it's fresh and you know, why it's on their mind. And then, you know, if they haven't told you no and they're still being responsive, then you still are following up with them every 24 to 48 hours until they pull, they do the green light and they're ready to go. Or they're being unresponsive. You know, they're not taking your calls. And they move over to your Friday night blitz list. I guess it's a blitz list is what I call it. Friday night blitz list. All right, cool. Well, let's uh, let's kind of take a a, 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 a rain check here to our next uh, session. We finally can deliver more content. This is a lot to go over on one night, of course. Um, we're just kind of getting started in all this. I promise to get my uh, content more more um, effective, efficient, so that you know we don't have too much time or being on these sessions. But um, how did everybody like the idea of me lining up several things, and then people could kind of come in and come out, you know, within a, a longer session, like on a Sunday night like this? Does that kind of kind of works? Does everybody like how this kind of worked? And if we had a format, or would do you like the idea? Of, of having a just a set 30 minute or 40 minute. And it's just like, you know, every three or four days, there's something else I'm doing that people can log into and pay attention to for 30 or 40 minutes or an hour. Any input? Yes, please. How about yes to all of the above? Let's just do it all. <laughs> All right. Well, fantastic. Well, here's what I want to do and what I envision for 155 still attendees after all of this time tonight. I want to envision. Yep. We need to get some shorter sessions for sure. I want to be able to get success stories from all of you doing the things that we're doing. So in other words, like put some things to action and I want to hear a success story from Elizabeth, you know, next time we do this from Norma, the next time we do this, and one from Alan, one from John, one from Chris. One from Johan, one from John Day, right? So I want you to visualize as you're applying the things we've talked about at any time during my all of my sessions tonight, I'm just wanting you to find that one conversation that's pivot, pivotal and that you can share that the next time that we get on one of these open sessions again so you can tell, tell us what that story was in a couple of minutes. So eventually we're going to have tons of testimonials just coming back left and right about what's working and then it will be easier to, uh, to train people even faster. Okay. Um, oh, yep. Hey, I got a question for you just quick. Yep. Doing different uh, sessions tonight, you've said you're starting a recording. Are these going to be available for us to play back? Because I've lost con uh, connection a couple different times, and it'd be nice also to show some new people coming in. So, yeah, you know, kind of get the whole duplication going. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I will. Um, I will work on uh, getting these ones um, cut and edited a little bit. So there'll be three different sessions. I think we did tonight, maybe maybe four. Um, and I've got like I got to think through. 
because I can just send out the link. Now that we've done them individually, I can just send out the link from Zoom and I don't have to re-upload them. I just got to make it a public share link. Maybe that's what we'll do. That'll be faster because uh, that, that's the beauty. They, they won't be fine cut like at the beginning or at the end. So they're going to be like a little talking and stuff like that. But who cares, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, we're finding that a lot of people really don't take time to go back through the replays anyway. So for those that really want it, then it will still work, right? So sure. um, I will get those out in the, in the mastermind um, group. If you are not part of the mastermind group already, obviously you're seeing, again, why the value should have a GoPro ticket so you can be sure. part of it. But just go ahead and message me directly on my Facebook and ask for those links if you're not part of the mastermind, okay? If you're part of the mastermind, I'm going to get those out here shortly, okay. so you'll get them from the mastermind. But if you're not part of the mastermind, message me on my Facebook and in, in, in Messenger, and I will get you those links. Okay. One other one other question I had. So after you know, there's a lot of momentum, and it, I mean, this is more momentum than I've seen in USAN, and I came in in 1997. Yeah. <laughs> I have learned more just in the last couple of weeks than I did those entire 20 years. So what's the plan on keeping this going after the 13th, you know, so we can bring in people, they can get into this and you know what I mean? Keep the culture going, keep the learning and the growing and the momentum. Yep. We're going to, we're going to like, we're committed to the mastermind for another six weeks after um, the GoPro event. So, I mean, we're going to keep that going. I, I think we're going to keep it all going realistically. We just got to, we're going to evolve. So we got to be even more effective, more dynamic. Um, and that's one of the reasons I'm stepping up here in my home office to try to lead the way um, and get better at delivering this content that everybody needs. And, um, and at the same time, that's going to make me better prepared as well to like kill it, you know, during GoPro. But I mean, there's no way that we're setting this thing down. Like if I just decide, if I decide to go take a week off and travel, we've got to have a system already in place where you guys are also plugging in and we have other leaders that are like taking over and things are like, it's, it's a, it's a routine, right? It's, it's like a system now. So I'm not, I'm just, I'm part of it, but I'm not, it's not going to be dependent on me. So it's all going to be, it's all of us, you know, as leaders that are doing it. And that's what I envision. And I envision just so much activity and so much new zooms happening all the time that it just, you kind of like don't need to go back through replays because there's just so much stuff going on. It's awesome. Right. So that's, that's, I think where we're going to involve evolve to. Okay. Cool. Um, oh, the entire Facebook live tonight is available on the private uh, USANA GoPro Mastermind because since we've been streaming this to Facebook, uh, that's going to be easy for people to go back on the Mastermind and go fast forward or rewind or whatnot and, and go to whatever part that might be. Okay. But, uh, but I'll still send out the links. I'm going to go through and get those share links. I know we have people that that uh, aren't, aren't probably going to uh, be able to get into it from the Mastermind. So. Okay. Jared's probably about ready to text me right now and say, no, they got to be, they got to make sure they have a ticket to be able to get one of our replay links. It is what it is. <laughs> That's right. He says, That's right. <laughs> uh, awesome. I'm, I'm so proud of everybody. Like, like it's just, I'm so proud. I can barely sit still. I mean, just have this many people. It's like, like Jared saying three hours and 43 minutes strong. We still have 143 serious people on here listening and learning. And uh, I just love all of you guys. Like, yeah, you know, keep keep rocking, keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Take these golden nuggets, start putting them to work. Um, let's let's keep staying connected. So we have uh, more sessions tomorrow. Our mastermind is tomorrow night uh, at what uh, eight thirty, another hour later than this one, um, and. It's going to be good. I've got some things we're actually going to be talking about onboarding and about what we want our new training to look like as far as some onboarding things as well, not just our live live Zoom. So we'll be getting lots of people's input from that. And then I'm hoping to create content that uh, is going to be what you guys want in the mastermind. So uh, and we can do it together. So. OK, you guys have a wonderful night or day, wherever you're calling in from, Un go ahead and unmute yourself. Say, say, I love you, Sona. Love you, Sona. Love you, Sona. Love you, Sona.
Thank you. 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 Thank you.